Hello, Acron fans! This is Shredder Fury 33 with a new replay cast between Kitan and Kavik on Boreal Cliffs. Kitan is in the 9 o'clock position, starting as Grekum, and Kavik is in the 3 o'clock position, also starting as Grekum. Actually, oh no, he was going to start as Grekum, but now he switched over to CISO. Oh, I see, he was. He went for CISO, jumped back, switched to Grekum, so both players are ultimately playing Grekum. Kitan is moving his Arcticus forward and getting his opening Sepian Faro, while Kavik is not moving his Arcticus forward to tank. He is simply getting his starting Sepian Faro for regeneration for RPs. So I think Kitan will be in a slightly better position. I mean, Kitan is a much more experienced player than Kavik. Kavik is fairly new, so he probably doesn't know about the whole Arcticus tanking trick. But yes, typically players will put the Arcticus further in the front so that any troops coming in will get hit by them. And also, as you can see, Kavik, while being CISO, is actually using his starting units to scout out... Actually, this is a really good idea. This is an awesome idea, actually. Echoing... So he's echoing CISO, using them to scout out... Using the three starting units to scout out at no cost to him, because they're going to echo out as soon as the time comes along and changes him to Grekum. But he's also playing Grekum, which is the race he obviously wants to play. But Grekum has a really hard time scouting, so that's a really clever way of dealing with this. I'm... I'm quite impressed. So anyway, Kavik just setting up his initial RPs, as is Kitan, so both players just doing pretty typical economic stuff. Kitan is about 3 seconds further ahead of Kavik, but it's not really a big deal at the moment. No player is doing too much with anything they have now, nothing really tricky. Just building up their economy, getting themselves set up, and they are at cross position, so it is going to be as large as Boreal Cliffs can effectively get. And Boreal Cliffs is a small map, by the way, I should really point this out. It is not a large map by any stretch of the imagination. So cross positions is probably the best way to have it set up for 1v1. And neither player is actually going for a rush, really. Kavik, as you can see, has gotten an Octo up. He's using that for further scouting. I guess his CISO scouting did get echoed out a bit prematurely for him. So he's setting on Octo, just trying to figure out where Kitan is set up, checking the closest position, seeing that Kitan is not there, which would be a bit of a relief. And now just echoing it out, setting up Octo. is going to be echoing around until he finally finds where Kitan actually is. Kitan, on the other hand, not worried at all about scouting, just getting himself his initial reef for tech and for additional healing and protection. So neither player has done anything particularly aggressive yet. We will see once Kavik actually finds Kitan, which will be in his next scouting pass right now, what will happen. And as you can see, the Octo is going straight towards Kitan's base. While Kitan has not bothered to scout yet, I'm not sure if he is just listening for where Kavik is starting or if he's not at all concerned. I mean, he might just, might just not care. He might just figure, well, it doesn't matter what he's doing. I'm going to be doing the same thing anyway. This, of course, is not a great idea on Boreal Cliffs because Boreal Cliffs is such a tiny map for close positions. But since it's cross positions, Kitan will not have a big problem with that. So Kavik just about to find where Kitan is and double checking his attack position. He does see where it is. He is jumping. Huh? I'm surprised he isn't managing the battle. I'm not sure what he's doing at this point. He's just double checking where the Octo was. Anyway, Kitan will be seeing that coming. He has started to respond to it. Setting out one of his Octos to meet the incoming Octo head on while Kavik sends the Octo straight in, not even using it to attack until it gets further into the base. It will lose this fight, but it will at least be able to see what Kitan is up to. Though, at this point, nothing particularly informative can be seen. I mean, there isn't really anything that... From what we can see here, it's just the Arcticus and the opening unit, so nothing special at this point. And it looks like Kavik will just barely stay alive, but the Sepi coming up here will kill him off before anything happens, so he won't be able to scout out the Reef, won't be able to scout out anything really useful happening. He does see that Kitan has not focused on QP at all. I'm not sure if he's going to be taking any conclusions off of that, because there really isn't much to say. If he's not going for QP early on, that just means... He's not going for a super early rush of tech. But I'm not sure if Kavik is aware of that or has, in his own setup, an intention to go for really fast tech. Because he does have this early QP. He might be going for an early Octopod. That's but the only thing he can go for at this point is he doesn't have any Seppies, doesn't have any Reefs. While well, Kitan is actually going for a Reef, as we saw before, he will be getting that. And both players actually very near the unplayable past. Not sure why Kavik is so concerned about this setup. He, is, he did scout around up to this base, the natural expansion near Kitan's base. But he does not seem to be focusing very heavily on actually harassing, yet he's very close to the unplayable pass. I'm not sure why exactly. So both players will not be able to issue a whole lot of orders for anything right now, as they are just hugging the unplayable pass this entire time. 
And like I said, I think Kavik is going to be trying to go for an Octopod, but I don't see him doing that yet. He is just going for getting this Octo to regenerate, and from here probably will build a Reef, but like I said, he's this early QP is a little bit odd. Oh, there we are. There's the Octopod. I was wondering where that was going to be, and we do have an Octopod. Not sure exactly why, because he did see what Kitan was going for, was heavily LC, which could imply base glass rush, but isn't really likely to happen at this point, because it doesn't know what's going to happen after that. Still, Octopod, not a bad idea. And Nail pointing out to Kavik that Kavik does need to build more RPs, he cannot get away with just having 3 on LC and 1 on QP. Which is of course the case, even though the new economy setup does make RPs a bit more valuable individually, thus meaning that you don't need to have as many RPs as you did in earlier versions, it's still important to build up RPs when you can, when you can get away with it. Now Kitan, of course, is building more RPs, he is getting his QP RPs, or QP RP. No, RPs, two, plural. And another Reef, so he will have a very difficult to penetrate base, and his economy will start to ramp up for purposes of getting more tech once he gets the LC required to actually build the RPs. While we see that Kavik is building up, he is now listening to Nail's advice, building up additional RPs, and using his Octo and Octopod to scout out and attack Kitan directly from the north, where he doesn't have a lot of defenses. He has an Octo waiting here for a potential attack, but he doesn't have anything really to deal with an Octopod very effectively. So Kavik coming in quite strongly, getting rid of the first Octo to defend, and will probably get cut up in the Arcticus, actually. Yes, he will get cut up in the Arcticus. I'm not sure if he's going to be moving his units away from there, or if he's going to continue to attack it. Best option is to move away from there. Especially since, once the time wave comes along, we will have these three reefs coming in, and rather disrupting Kavik's efforts. And of course, the reefs heal up very effectively, so... Right now, Octopod being built for Kitan, so we will be able to fold this off quite effectively, losing an Octo in the process, but... Maybe losing an Octo in the process. Sorry, I should really double check that. No, not losing an Octo in the process. Not at all. And Nail also advising, continuing to advise Kavik. Note that this is public, the Observer chat, so it's not like Kitan doesn't know what's going on, but Kavik, like I said, is fairly new. Kavik managing to deal a fair amount of damage to that Octopod before, but it does come up. It is online, we'll be able to take care of the Octo that is actually dealing pretty much most of the damage that the Reef isn't able to heal up in time. However, Kitan. Kitan looks like he will actually be able to hold off. He will be able to defend. The three reefs are powerful enough to hold off that octopod that is unsupported. Now it looks like Kavik is sending out. He is sending out his main triad up to this base over in the top right corner. That will be very effective once he's once he is established there, getting a bit more economy. Though at this point, I'm not sure if he's actually in a safe position to do that. He has not his main base isn't even saturated yet, and he's moving his entire triad over. Not building a secondary triad, but moving the main one over. He might be concerned about the Octopod and about being harassed in his main base, but at this point he really is falling behind. His lack of reefs, lack of tech, of anything. And of course the fewer RPs. He's not going to be doing that well, unfortunately, and this main attack was probably his only hope. From which he is retreating, losing an Octo in the process, not being able to save that due to lack of Chrono Energy. Kavik will be hanging out in Kitan's natural expansion, assuming Kitan does not do the same thing as Kavik and take the expansion in the corner. And here we see Kavik is actually building up a reef on top of this side expansion over here. And like I said, his main base has no units in it left, only the RPs. Not sure if Kitan is expecting that, but Kitan will be taking out the Octopod, and possibly signaling that he's going for this expansion, but he's definitely taking out that Octopod as best he can. Kavik is running away, does not want to leave that there. Kitan will be probably, possibly expanding to that, almost definitely getting air units at this point. I've seen a reason why not, except for the lack of funds at this point, but he does have enough RPs he can support it. He is however getting more octopods and using that for continued assaults. So Kavik is in a rather tight spot right now. Though he does have more octopods coming up of his own, so this is going to be a very heavy octopod battle. This is fairly obvious. Both players are in a good position to get advanced structures, which means they're likely to get air units fairly soon. However, Kitan is an advantage militarily, so I expect him to get the air units. I expect Kavik to continue working on getting octopods and possibly more base class units to fight off octopods. And where is... No, Kitan still has his Octo in... Or sorry, Seppi and Faro. He does not have his Octo. That was used for Progen. That is going out to attack. So, Kitan at a major advantage right now, both economically and militarily. Not with technology, but neither player going heavily for tech, and nor should they. Really, it would be very risky for Kavik to go for it, and Kitan... Actually, Kitan should go for it, because he has a great position with which to go for it from... 
but Kavek is in a very tight spot, and as you can see, Kaiden is going to be... Yeah, he is going to be getting into Kavik's main base, taking out his RP, taking out his Arcticus. So Kavik is not doing very well at all. And Kaiden is going both for Legal Class and Advanced Structure. So he will probably... Wow, I'm not sure if he has enough money to go for Legal Class right off the bat, but he is definitely trying to, or at least was intending to. No, he is definitely... He is still intending to. He has not undone that order. Or maybe now he has. It's hard to tell. He did issue some orders here, but it looks like they're just mainly to do with attacking the Arcticus, getting rid of everything here. And Kaivek coming in from behind, trying to flank out the Octopods, but has too few of them. He may get into an advantageous position, but Kaiden has moved back. He should be able to deal with this as it comes up. And yes, he can. He is able to take care of these Octopods coming in, and we will be able to continue to harass Kaivek's base, or just assault Kaivek's base entirely. Kaivek going for a couple more RPs in the expansion. While Kaiden, like I said, get legal class and advanced structures, he will be using this firewall to make a spire, and then from there probably get. Oh, at this point, I'm not sure what. Sippy Legos are a popular choice. Octoligos would actually work decently well to do the size of the map. It's a small map, so the Octoligo travel time isn't going to be a problem. Or he might suspect that Kavik is also going for air, and. No, I might not suspect that. He doesn't hear the air. And he sees a lot of Octopus, so there's no reason to suspect Kavik going for air, but he might go for Sippy Legos anyway. See, so yeah, Kaiden in a great spot right now. He does have an RP over here as well, but mostly his main base is where he's getting his resources from. He has not yet built his spire. This is a faro that I suspect is being used for the spire, but he's not yet built it, not going for that. And Kavek has managed to hold off the Octopod attack only after it destroyed a couple of the RPs and the Arcticus. So Kavek still falling behind. Kaiden, as you can see, has a ton of resources compared to what Kavek has. And I wouldn't be surprised if Kaiden actually went for chronoporting at this point. And there's the spire. But with the amount of resources Kitan has, Chronoporting would be a bad thing to get if he's going for a Leo class because he doesn't have enough money to support both, but he might do it anyway, just to have that option or just because, hey, why not, he has these Octopods here. Still, the Octopods are getting quite handily fended off by Kavik's Octopods. Though he did lose two of his... he did lose QPRPs, and he has one more in his expansion, but really it's not enough. Kitan... Like I said, kind of an advantage. And here we are, chronoporting, as I expected. So Kaiden will be going for that. I'm not sure how he's going to support legal class, or if he's actually planning ultimately on supporting legal class, or if he's one of the option. I'm frankly, I'm not sure what he's doing with that. I think he may have wasted the money on legal class. However, it is negligible resource cost, so I don't really see why he should be concerned about that. And here comes Kavik's Octopods going in towards the center of the map. Will actually be coming into Kaiden's base, and as you can see, Kite. Jumping forward with Kavik, is, Kavik has hit Kitan's main base, damaging one of the Octopods quite heavily. The reefs are not enough to heal it, but they will be enough to allow it to destroy one of the Octopods, which actually will be enough to keep it alive. So, Kavik not in a great position right now. He is building advanced structures of his own. The like I said, Kitan is well ahead, both from chronoporting and from legal... Well, having Aryans and everything. So it looks like... Faropod and Octopod projecting. Sepi Legos will be coming up very soon. However, my... I'm a bit surprised he didn't just use the Chronoporting to jump back the Octopods to win that battle that came in earlier. Anyway, Faropod coming along for Sepi Legos. We will be seeing those very sh shortly as soon as the QP comes up to build them. Though, QP being the main resource of Chronoporting, I'm not sure this is the best strategy that Kitan could be going for. Kitan is so far ahead, it doesn't much matter. Kavik's gonna have to go for a really well thought out, really well timed surgical strike in order to win from this point. Surprisingly not going for a spire of his own. I'm... There we go. Okay, there's a spire. I was wondering where that was. He should be getting air units fairly soon, but like I said, Kitan is in a great spot to be firing off an uppercut once he gets enough it just, it's a matter of time right now. So, Kavik has probably about three minutes or so before Kitan will have enough QP for both. Actually, three QP RPs. They return 24. Yeah, I'd say about two or three minutes before Kitan is going to be a major concern when it comes to chronoporting, chronoporting legal class units particularly. So, Kavik should be able to build up the pods in time to help defend. But he's going to need quite a few to get out of this mess. And he really, he's in a tight spot right now. Kitan has. He has a Sepi Ligo coming up, so it's only going to be... A, once the Sepi Ligo is up, it's going to be able to chronoport. It's a minute and a half left. I mean, the Sepi Ligo itself is going to... No, not even that. Because he has the money to chronoport with. Sepi Ligos take about 40 seconds to build, so... Yeah, there's very little time left for Kavik to deal with this. I'm not sure that he has 
Sippy League pods up in time, and Kitan actually going for a Chronoport. Looks like probably with the Octopods, actually. Let's see, their Octopods are right here. No, Octopods are right here. No, not going for the Chronoport. He had just paused. Bizarre, I'm not sure what happened there, but... Not going for the Chronoport, probably the best idea, because he can deal quite a bit of damage right off the bat, or as much as he would be able to feasibly deal with the Sippy Pods there. And, of course, the Sippy League will need to have quite a bit of QP to Chronoport with... Costs, I think, about 80 some odd QP to Chronoport. And Octopod's coming from Kavik. We'll be able to take out the Farpod. We'll pop. Might be able to take out the Sebi Lugo before it gets built. And Kaiden still not going for Chronoports. Looks like he's mainly focused on microing his attack in here. We'll be able to deal some damage to the Sebi Paws before having to throw in his Sebi Lugo. And his Sebi Lugo is about halfway done. The Octopods are in place to deal with it. And he is actually to Chronoporting back a couple oct Octos, and those Octos are going to be doing a decent amount of destruction. They will be able to take out one of the Octos that is already here. This is actually when Advanced Structure was originally done, so the Sebi Pods won't even be built yet. Kitan will be in a great spot once this propagates towards the future. And it looks like this is going to be really tough, though, for Kavik. Kavik, he had heavily damaged Sebi Lego before it went into the past, and it looks like or before it was built, before it has a chance to go back into the past. And it looks like Kitan will lose it, in fact. He is not able to... Wow, nicely done. Getting rid of the Sebi Ligo. That is a huge threat dealt with right there. The Octos in his base are still going to be a problem, but getting rid of that Sebi Ligo is huge. Getting rid of the Spire as well. Kavik is doing a... Wow, he is actually managing to pull this almost around. I'm definitely on even footing now. Not, not going to say Kavik has won yet. Titan is still in a bit of a lead, but it's more even footing than it was before. Losing that Sepi Ligo is going to be huge for Kavik. He has wasted, caused Titan to waste a ton of money. However, Titan still does have a chronoporting advantage over Kavik, so Titan still has massive dominion over the timeline now. And he has taken advantage of that. He's dealt, dealt a lot of damage. Wow, okay, that's that is an insane amount of damage. That is actually quite worrisome for Kavik. I think that might actually be the main base to try being destroyed. I'm, I'd like to see what's going on there. I'm quite curious. No one has actually gone back there to check. But yeah, it's a lot of damage being dealt in the unplayable past. I think Kavik's actually losing his main base right here to those two Octos. And if he is, that's going to be really painful. And yes, he is in fact losing a... No, sorry, that's not... No, it is. Yes, he is losing quite a bit to those Octos. Not sure if it's as much as he needs to worry about... Yes, it is. He does need to worry about that quite a bit. Those Octopods that he had built... Actually, they're still in place. They're still dealing with the Sebi Ligo. But the Sebi Ligo has run away, and it is healing up, so... Oh, that is painful. Kitan has actually managed to save that Sebi Ligo. Just barely save it. But save it nonetheless. So, I'm not sure exactly how we... Well, if you notice in the original time iteration, we saw the Sebi Ligo was ordered to here right before the Octopods killed it. So it looks like it just got lucky this time around and managed to avoid the Octopods healing up and keeping itself alive. So I think... I think Kitan is actually going to be able to win this. That Sebi Ligo... Losing the Sebi Ligo was the big thing that gave Kavik a bit of an advantage and now he's lost even that. So it looks like Kitan will be able to pull out a win from this. I don't see Kavik getting out of this. The Octopods in his main base dealt way too much damage. And that Sebi Ligo being alive is huge. So Kaiden not having lost out on everything because the Sebi Ligo is, is still alive. There's pretty much no way for Kavik to get back in. He has no RPs except for these ones in his main base getting LC, which are all... Well, some of them are exhausted even. He is pretty much done. However, one Faro coming in here to try to help out. Not sure why he built it from the Arcticus, though. That was odd. He has the LC for it, but that still, I like I said, Kitan just getting weaponry just to add insult to injury. Probably going to fire a PCM to finish off Kavik. Kavik trying to rebuild what he can, though. Valiant effort. He is building up more RPs with the options he has, with the LC he has, but massive force from Kitan coming in here. Spearheaded by the Sepi Ligo, destroying the main base RPs with impunity. And of course, once weaponry comes up, then anything can happen. I think Kitan will actually go for, given the amount of resources he has, probably go for Chrono Bomb. But frankly, I just hold out for the PCM and the Plasma Cruise Missile and just tear everything to shreds. I know it's not, it's much more expensive, but for what Kavik has right now, it would completely finish him off.
However, Kaiden has opted instead to just finish him off with a standard conventional assault on the ground. With Sepi Ligo support, of course, but still, conventional support, conventional assault will tear apart Kavik's base and finish this game. So, it's just a short matter of time before Kavik decides to surrender, and yeah, like Nail said, Kavik did need a lot more RPs. He... Other, other than that, he did pretty well. He just really just needed more money. That'd be the biggest thing. I mean, that... The way he set up that assault and the way he was microing around was actually quite quite nice, and the use of CISO at the start to scout out as an Echo Scout was very clever. I, I'm i surprised I haven't seen that much before, but yeah, that was a really clever way of scouting out. And that, but that's the game, still. I think Kavik still has some potential here, and yeah, Chrono Bomb was in fact used. But yeah, I think Kavik... Kavik, with a bit more practice, could become a fairly formidable player. However, right now, he is not going to win. So yeah, he has surrendered, he has GG'd. He is not yet officially surrendered, but I'm sure he will shortly. And then that will be the game. So I'm not sure why he's waiting. I'll be just double checking to see what's going on. So yeah, that's the game. I'm just gonna end it here, and I will be back shortly with another one. So stay tuned, everyone.